Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Rishri Starts here, and today I'm gonna be doing a video on like how to make a simple but nice and clean background in Photoshop. Um, this is gonna be for CS CS6, but it's pretty much the same for all photo for most of the Photoshop's. Um, although I would recommend getting CS6 if you can if you don't have it, um, because there's a few features that are better in CS6. Um, yeah. Um, the first thing, and this whole thing is going to be in Photoshop, it's not going to be any, uh, any Cinema 4D, if you don't know what that was, it's a 3D modeling program, which is what I use for my backgrounds that have like 3D looking text, um, uh, which is much more advanced. Well, the simple aspects of it are not too hard, but there's a lot of advanced ob ob aspects <laughs> that are kind of pretty difficult to learn and remember, and so... I may eventually use some tutorials on that, but that one wouldn't be for a little bit just because it's more advanced. And you can still, using this, make a nice background. Lots of the nicest, cleanest backgrounds on YouTube are just purely uh, 2D. At least 2D Photoshop. And like, if you ask for a background, this is what 2D will mean. Um, yeah, so the first thing you need to do to make a background is uh, open a template. I have one here, but uh, I'll put this in the description. It's by ZENX at uh, youtube.com slash znxgaming he made this, I downloaded it from one of his videos uh, so I didn't make this, I don't take credit for it um, yeah so first these just show you where what will show up on different devices I just usually close all these at the start um, and these are the guidelines so just click hold and drag down and leave everything but this, the background uh, yeah and then for this, um, let me think for a color correction. I think I want to do a dark background, like a, an almost black with a uh, red text. So I'm gonna go a real dark gray, like just above black, for the foreground color, and hit Alt Backspace to fill this whole layer with it. Um, and then I'm hit D for default to bring it back to the normal black and white colors. Uh, I'm going to go to the gradient, which I have set on the radial, radial gradient. And I'll make a new layer. And just drag from the middle here. Yeah. And then so usually you want to keep your text in this area because this will be seen on all devices. So anything real important keep in here. Usually I'll have some design. I'll usually most of the stuff will be in here in my design. Some, will, some stuff will go out here, but usually won't be that important. Uh, yeah. And. Oh, so now I'm going to show you how to do that cloudy effect that I have in my background. So make a new layer, default color black on top, white on the bottom, go to filter, and come down here to render, and then clouds, and then render this. And then there's two different things you can go. If you want more of, if you want to have just the white of the clouds, you can go to screen, which pretty much gets rid of kind of the black. But, or you can go to multiply if you want kind of the darker, which gets rid of the um, gets rid of the white, kinda. And so I'm I'm not sure why you can see this, but this has a nice kind of cloudy look. I'm gonna lower the opacity a bit. Probably bring it down to like 50, and then I'm gonna take an eraser with a soft brush, and then just kind of get rid of that a bit, and then. I'm gonna make a layer under this and go to a white brush and go to like 10 opacity and just do a little bit of white. I'm gonna just lower the opacity of that whole layer a bit. Just give it kind of a radial look. Uh, yeah. And so to text, for text, let's just go arts. Uh, this is a font I had before. Uh, what font? Oh, if you want to know how to get where I get my fonts, what is this? That's my channel. Go subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> I almost had 100 subscribers. Over a thousand video views. I'm real happy. Although, I, I kind of want the results to come out for this challenge, this uh, GFX challenge. It's my most, most viewed video, which is real cool. I think it was a nice design. Um, yeah. So, let's see. Oh yeah, tofont.com is where I get most of my fonts. Uh, I get most of them in like techno, under techno, like square, uh, sci-fi, stuff like that. Although I have gotten fonts from everything. 
pretty much every category here and using them, but most of them, most of the generic kind of fonts that you see in backgrounds are in this category, and you can see there's tons of pages of these. I actually spent days going through that, <laughs> downloading fonts. I I don't even have that many, but I still have a lot. Um, I've been using this Batman Forever font a lot lately. I like it. So we'll go arts. And then to center stuff, what you want to do is this layer, I know it says background, but it's not a background layer. It's not doesn't have the lock over there. It's not a norm it's just a normal layer. And so you can't do this with layers of background. If it's a background layer, you have to make it a normal layer. So be in the move tool, click on this background, hold shift and click here. I know. Never mind. Hold control and click here. And now bring up these uh tools. This is align it to align it vertically. I guess it's already aligned vertically. <laughs> now align it horizontally. I clicked on the wrong I clicked on the wrong layer. Right, that's why. And so align it vertically and then align it horizontally. And then yeah, I kinda like that red sam salmony color. So I'm just gonna go to I go to great this makes it kinda give it like a kind of shiny look, gradient overlay, then change the blending mode of the gradient overlay to overlay, and then because if it goes like that, makes it kinda you know, fade up drop shadow to make it appear like it's sitting off the page a bit. Uh, stroke black looks nice, but I'm gonna go with something brighter. See, white is a little too, a little too much for me. So what I like to do is lower it down. It's like a gray, and you see how it kind of looks like it's going up the sides, but then it fades out because as it gets whiter or lighter because of the gradient, the white becomes more like that, or the gray. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna go more here, so it's more reddish. All right. So that's probably good for blending options. Um, now I'm just gonna move this up a bit. So if you want to move it straight up, hold shift, move it straight in one direction, hold shift, and then just drag up. And then see, I can't move this to the sides. And so I'm just gonna move it up a bit. So I'm gonna give myself some room because I want to have some text underneath. So I'm gonna go graphics. And I, usually I like to do this in a different font. I might as well just go get that one I had earlier. Hyperspace. I like the thin look of this. I'm not so sure I like the super blocky look of it, but it's good enough for now, especially since this won't be going up. I probably won't put this up in my channel. Then I'm only going to align this horizontally because I don't want to align it vertically. Um, put some blending options on here. Put a drop shadow. the stroke look like? A black stroke looks nice. Yeah, white stroke looks weird. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of an outer glow. And just the salmon -y color again. And just lower this opacity a bit. Alright, that looks nice. Then what I do, just give this some sort of, give this whole thing some sort of, I'm going to move this down a bit first. So holding shift again. Uh, I'm going to take the line tool over here. If you don't have this, click and hold here. And it comes up with all these. I just already have the line tool selected. I click, hold shift again. Holding shift pretty much allows you to move stuff straight in one direction. And then I'm going to move this down a bit. You can also move stuff with the arrow keys if you want to do it real slow. And real precise. I'm going to rasterize this. All right, and then since I forgot to choose a color for this, it's just white. I'm gonna go to blending options, color overlay. Give it that salmony reddish color again. And we have to rasterize this since you can't put it will, like if you put a gradient, you can't put a gradient over top of a color overlay at the same time. Oh no, not I mean I probably actually could have done that. Oh whatever. <laughs> It's not a huge deal. And then, um, I'll probably just put a drop shadow and outer glow. Increase the size a bit and then lower the opacity. And give this that salmon color again. 
All right, rasterize that, and then just with a soft brush, click. Oh, damn it! All right, try to put this about the same distance on each side. All right, that that looks good. You know, if you want, you can hold Alt until you get double arrows and drag it down, and then. This one smaller. Wait, how much did I? How much did I reduce this by? Let's go one inch. Shit, I don't remember where I started. <laughs> that doesn't look right. That's good enough. You know, something like that. Just give it. It takes a while to get used to these little things, but a lot of putting like little tiny artsy things in the background makes it real simple and clean, but it also gives it a real nice look. Uh, the Skype like my videos spam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll blow this down a tiny bit. Now, oh yeah, I'm probably going to place a flare. Um, I have, I'm going to take a flare out of a graphics pack I downloaded. I'm not quite sure where I got, I didn't mean to place this, I meant to open it. I'm not quite sure where I got this graphics pack. Graphics pack. Uh, maybe it will say the link. Reflect, reflect exclusive 1.5k pack. Um, yeah, try to find this guy on YouTube. This is 1.5, maybe that's the 2, and it's just the font. It's, I remember it's 2.5k subs. And, uh, try to find him on YouTube, see if you can find it. Um, if not, just search Optical Flare Pack. I'm just gonna use this because it's a real nice flare here. And so drag this window out, and just drag this over. A soft brush, just kind of erase the edges a bit. There we go. Oh. Did that a little too much. Oh, this is below that foggy layer, that's why. Is all this? Th oh, it is. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I had all this below that cloudy stuff. Alright. Long are we? This is not going to be a short video. Uh, yeah, just erase. I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> so embarrassing. Alright, just erase the edges. Um, image adjustments. Hue and saturation will just give this that salmon color again. Yeah, kind of like that. And then we'll just place this right on top. Maybe hit Control J. Oh, this should be over top. That's the problem. There, and that's that's a nice look right there. Or I can move it on top of the T. Make another one move on top of the R. Maybe move one on top of the S. Move one on top of the A. Ah, it's a little much. <laughs> See if we make this all one layer. Was well, linear dodge add? No, what was that song? Lower the layer past you know, all these. Oh, you can mess around with it. I'll just leave it like that for now, even though it's not super amazing. Um, if you want, you could put one of those flares on these lines. Last thing, I'm gonna try to keep this under 15 minutes, real quick. Um. Real quick, take a salmon brush, uh, take the color that you made, does that not salmon every time. Um, new layer, kind of go like, wait, just kind of give it like that color, and just make it smaller and just give it blotches of that color all over the place, just to kind of give it like an abstract, you know, alright. Yeah, that's the video, um, thanks for almost 100 subs, and I, uh, yeah, see you later. We'll wait till exactly 15, exactly 15 minutes. Alright, bye.